this album had an energy about it. Not energy in the sense that like it was always in your face, like it was always super hype or whatever. I really felt like she put like herself into it, you know? Like I felt like her spirit through the music. What's going on everybody? It's your boy Toby BQ again here with another music review. Little change in scenery, but hey, that's not going to stop the good vibes that we got going on. Today, we are going to be taking a look at The Age of Pleasure by Janelle Monet. Thank you to this subscriber for suggesting this album. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I've never listened to Janelle Monet. I was first introduced to her when she was performing with Bruno Mars. I think they first performed at the Grammys or something. This is like at least 10 years ago. And I do remember liking her vibe. She kind of like had some of that old swagger that Bruno had. I only know her from Glass Onion as an actress. I knew that she always made music, but I guess today we're actually going to take a look and see what she's got going on in her, in her catalog. This is her most recent album, The Age of Pleasure, came out about a week ago. And so I'm really excited to review this one. I have no context going into this. I have no idea what her music sounds like. I'm taking a look at these featured artists. I have no idea who these people are. So this should be really interesting, but that's what we're here for. We're here to expand our horizons. I say we just jump right into it. In and take a look. Track one, we have Float featuring Soon Kuti and Egypt 80. Hopefully, I didn't butcher any names. Okay, yeah. A little fade in. All right. Loving these horns. All right. Float all of my floor on this floor. I don't step, I don't walk, I don't dance, I just Yeah. Yeah. Knew the beat was coming. I don't dance, I just float. 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 Oh, I like this. I just float. I used to let niggas get to me. I used to be my own enemy. Now I didn't have several epiphanies. Over some breakfast at Tiffany. Yeah. Nah, this is hard. I like. I like whatever that sounds like an oboe in the background. Makes me wonder if that's Egypt 80 because it sounds like an Egyptian sound, you know? Like a like a snake charmer, like an oboe, a snake charmer an instrument. My face got don't come with a limit. I swipe it, I spin it, I swear I be doing the most. Look, 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 look. I don't dance, I just look, 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 look. Yeah, a little, little sporadic horn. Wow, I'm digging that. I had no idea who the two featured artists were. I figured maybe one of them was the woman that was rapping, but it was actually Janelle, which is sick. She can sing and rap. That's hard. You know, this song was just basically a flex from Janelle. I'm becoming like a bigger and better person than I used to be. I'm not just dancing anymore. I'm I'm floating. And that's cool. I like that she's kind of stunting. I like that she's already vibing. I mean, the name of the album is The Age of Pleasure. So it just sounds like she's going to be enjoying herself. All right. Track number two, Champagne Shit. Ooh. All right. So she really does have that, that old sound, that old swagger. Loving that little keyboard. Those beats are so crisp. Ooh. 
I don't know if you could hear like those those lower notes, whatever was going on in the underbelly of that, but that was I was feeling it. I love the I love the horns. Got the dimples in the back. You know, you know. <laughs> yeah, bro, Janelle's a player, man. She's a stud. <laughs> Oh, is it, okay. This is track three, Black Sugar Beach. This is like a little, little outro. Hey, yo, I'm fucking with this. I just dancing in my chair. Oh my God. I was wondering what that extra minute was going to be. I didn't know if that was like an interlude or, you know, whatever. Wow. Okay. Okay. It sounded like three went into four. I'm not sure, but I had to take a break. So we'll review track two and track three together because track three was basically an outer lewd, if that's a thing. So first of all, champagne shit. Cool song. I enjoyed it. I will say as we were getting to the end of it. I was like, all right, maybe this is going on a little bit too long. And then when it switched up into Black Sugar Beach, that won my heart. I don't even know how to describe it. I don't know what genre is. I just know that I've heard it from like 70s music. It just made me think of Marvin Gaye. Maybe that's totally like on point or maybe off base. I don't know. You guys let me know. But it was like a little cha-cha that was going on at the end. Oh my God. I was vibing with that hard. I low-key would listen to that on its own, but with the second track, it obviously makes sense. Two, three tracks so far, like, I'm already really enjoying this. I understand now why Bruno Mars was kicking it with her and collaborating. This is making a lot of sense to me from my, like, personal scope. Track four, Phenomenal featuring Dochi. I'm looking at a thousand versions of myself. All right, a little jazzy vibe. And we're all fine as fuck. Say it to my face. Bitch, say it to my face. <laughs> wait, 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 I gotta pause this. This is actually making a lot of sense, like having seen Glass Onion. I remember watching that movie and feeling like Janelle Monet is so extra, like in the best way possible. And this is that in music form. All right. I like the little guitar. Oh, I'm loving the jazz drums, like the cymbal. Yeah, I'm just really enjoying the, the percussive elements. <laughs> a little purr. I like that. Give me head if you wanna. Lights won't marijuana. You can vote down, vote it out if you wanna. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. The jazz, the jazz vibes. Say it to my face. Oh my, oh my, yeah, this this song is aging like fine wine. I'm looking at a thousand versions of myself. And we're all fine as fuck. Say it to my face. Bitch, say it to my face. Say it. Are we going to get another interlude? All right. Track five is called Hot. I think it's like Hout, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Hot. Hot. 
Come on, Janelle, give me, give me, give me a hit right here. I got another one. Ah oui, qu'est-ce que tu fais, Tony Doula? Ilala. Viens avec moi, Tony. Check six. C'est ton ami. C'est ton ami. Vous êtes tous les deux trop beaux. Oh my God, all these sounds. Wow. Wow. This is all transitioning, but I feel like that was a good natural stopping point. I mean, that was three songs that were basically one. It seems like that's what she's going for here, putting in like main tracks and then adding like sauce on top of it. And then in that one, she added even a little more sauce. Conceptually, this is so cool. This album has chapters almost. I love when artists do that. Already, I just love so much how she's showing her appreciation um, and embracing the older sound. And that's not like necessarily new. I mean, again, maybe she's been doing this in all of her music, but she's doing this in such a like unique and detailed way. It's just really impressive. The jazz elements going on and phenomenal. <laughs> there was a lot happening in that song. There was a lot of, again, a lot of flexing. Like I said earlier, she's a stud, man. Like she doesn't play around. I could see this being very empowering for really just anybody. This music makes you feel like you're kind of the shit, you know? And then Hot, Hot, that was sick. I feel like she gives us these tracks that are like, yeah, you know, like I can sing, like do a little bit of jazz here. But then she's like, bitch, don't forget that I can rap. She jumps on the track. She just bodied it, man. As soon as the beat kicks it, you know, that's going to get me hype. And then Ooh La La, that was just a little texture, a little like universe builder in the album, which I always appreciate. What a three song stretch. That that was sick. Track number seven, Lipstick Lover. Lipstick You know me, I love the upbeat strum. Tell me what you do when we walk up in the room. Yeah, hope it's something nasty we can try. Find me on my neck, and you know what's coming next. We can make a movie, I can ride it. Let's just make a move, baby. Really got a thing for my lipstick lover, 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 lover. I do anything for my lipstick lover, 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 lover. I like lipstick on my neck. Leave a sticky icky in a place I won't forget. I like a sticky icky. Neck. Baby, I'm obsessed. Give me a spoil. I'll take my time. Just want to feel your hips on mine. I really got a thing for my lipstick lover, 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 lover. I do anything for my lipstick lover, lover. This is a vibe. It's a little bop. That was so like laid back, such a vibe. I feel like there's a you know a few artists who have been like super open about their sexuality and will use she instead of he in their songs. She's like not hiding it. I don't know if that's always been like her thing. I don't know if like this is new for her, if this is a new step, but her comfortability to to just do that and put it all out there is super dope. She's being vulnerable, right, about her life. And she's sounding great while she's doing it. So I commend her so far. This is halfway through. And I'm like heavy vibing right now. Track eight, The Rush, featuring Nia Long and Amari. Amari? Amari. I'll have to look them up after. And this looks like we got another like little chapter here. Feel your ocean come to my moon. Let our rain become a monsoon. I want to 
That's Nia. That's gotta be Nia. I kind of timed that perfectly. <laughs> Is she like, she African? Like I'm getting like a Afrobeats type like flow. Here we go into track nine, the French 75 featuring sister Nancy. The guitar accents are just awesome. And just like the little bongo, you know? First of all, Nia Long on the track, solid move, you know? Jerry Cole talks about her in uh, No Role Models, you know? Like, my only regret was too young for Lisa Bonet. My only regret was too young for Nia Long. I mean, Nia Long, she was kind of a sex symbol for a while. Definitely like that 90s, early 2000s. Yeah, and still, I mean, still, she's got it. I'm not gonna... She still got it. I don't think she's ever gonna lose it. <laughs> Let me look up this artist, Amare Ghanaian. See, I knew, I knew I was getting like a Western African vibe. Oh, okay. So she's known for Afrobeats as well as her fluid representation of gender and sexuality. Wow. Okay. So maybe that's something Janelle's doing. I'm not familiar with a lot of these artists, but maybe that's something she's doing with this album is like bringing in a lot of people that identify in the LGBTQ plus community, which is super cool to make it collaborative in that sense. Well, again, she's still owning like her story and who she is. I know Beyonce did something similar with her last album. She brought in a lot of influence, more specifically like black LGBTQ uh, plus folks. So I hope people don't strike this album down. When I'm listening to this, I can hear a little bit of Beyonce, but this feels a little too like specific for Beyonce, in my opinion. I'm digging it. I'm liking what Janelle's doing here. Perhaps the mission of this was to, you know, create a sexual reawakening in people. <laughs> it is the age of pleasure. All right. Track 10, Water Slide. God knows. Only God knows what this could mean. <laughs> So we got like a little bit of a reggae vibe. Okay. A little vocal layering. Ooh, I like that little outro. Cool. That's probably going to go through the next song. If I was an Olympic swimmer, that would be my hype up song. I feel like she was calling out like every part of a water park, you know, it's just about the lazy river, you know, like that was a fun song. I like that. And again, like it was showing respect. It was showing appreciation for like reggae, but it wasn't a full reggae song. 
very cool. I think that I'm still putting this in the context of like my own musical preferences and musical knowledge. I've mentioned Bruno a few times already, but like it really is becoming more evident to me why they, you know, would perform together or go on tour together, whatever. I don't want to say she's like, you know, a female or I guess a, a non-binary version of Bruno Mars, but that's kind of like how I'm seeing it, like how I'm being introduced to that. He's not like PG. He talks about sex, love. He throws it all out there, but he makes it sound like PG. The sound that he brings is so universal that like everyone loves, but the stuff that he's talking about is, you know, low key, not PG. And I get the same feeling from this where like you hear the melodies, you hear the instrumentals. It's all such very pleasing music. The stuff that she's talking about, you know, it ain't so innocent. And I think that's such a sick Trojan horse when it comes to music. For the people who normally wouldn't listen to what she has to say, maybe she's turning heads. And if she is, that's amazing. But she have you hooked from the jump. Sound-wise, what she's talking about, she's an absolute G. She's got my support. All right, track 11, No Better, featuring CK and those first two artists that we heard in the first track. Just relentless with the horns. I love it. If you told me like Anderson Pack was playing like drums for these songs, I believe you because whoever this percussionist is is awesome. Oh. Ooh. A little French. Like the harmonizing. Ah, bro, the drums are so impressive. Horns again, man. So far, like of all the tracks, that one probably like won't be in my rotation. It's just more so like if I'm listening to the album, I'll listen to it. It's not a skip in my opinion. I just can't see myself being in the mood for that song. But I like the featured artist CK. It sounded like he was also like an Afrobeats type singer. All right, so he's Nigerian. So she's just repping West Africa right now. I mean, is she West African? Because that would make a lot of sense. She's from kansas city so she performed at an african methodist episcopal church growing up so maybe she just like has an affinity for african music which is dope because afrobeats is an awesome genre i feel like that's exciting for more afrobeats artists to become more popular more mainstream and, and you know featured in american music there's so much talent around the world but definitely like in that spot of africa west africa man that's a lot of a lot of awesome sound track 12 paid in pleasure <laughs> I just want to want I love you Janelle oh Why did I not let this run through? I wasn't expecting this. I'm still putting those horns in there too. Bro, why is this one of the least listened to songs on the entire album? So ironic that I was like, oh, this is cool. She's featuring Afrobeats artists, you know, thinking in my head, like the sound's not fully there. And then she comes out with that. I should have just let the song run. Ugh, that was so, that was, I love that. When you hear that kind of beat, how could you not want to move, you know? All right. Track number 13, Only Have Eyes for Two. That's what it sounds like.
Why is this kind of reminding me of an MF Doom sample? Darker than the East River, larger than the Empire State, where the beast who got the barbed wire gate is on the job, not my fate. Tired of the wait till the villain bring deliverance from the dire straits. I only, I only. Harmonizing with herself this is crazy. But who are the two that she has eyes for? Ah, so it's a play on the jazz standard. I only have eyes for you. Oh, so it's from like back in the 30s. Again, she's really paying homage to like older music. <laughs> Someone didn't review. She references being relationships with two people at once and float when they say she stay in the hills. He stay in Atlanta. I pay for them both. <laughs> we love a poly queen. <laughs> yeah, that's actually sick. All right. When I was reading it, said I only have love for two. I thought maybe it's like I'm bisexual. So like I like love both. But I didn't even catch that in the first song. Uh, her singing was beautiful there track 14 is called a dry red i'm assuming that's wine this is the last one i'm kind of sad i've been enjoying this album a lot Keyboard. You've been on my mind. Yeah, you've been on my mind. Ever since the sun up. Look, now baby, I'm choosy. But me and you can fucking let you cozy. And we can make a scene. It's a lot of friction, I don't know. Baby, won't you wine for me? Wine for me. I see what you did there, Janelle. Okay. That was very clever. I like that. Whoa. When that started to rev up at the end, I thought it was going to be like one of those albums that like full loops into the beginning. We can check. Like ish. So they're spelling wine, W H I N E. Even though it's spelled like the way you would spell like wah, like wine, she's actually referring to the dance move, the wine, like when you wine your hips. I just want to wine. So I think she's kind of saying, move your hips for me, which were kind of the crux of this album. I feel like hips were mentioned in pretty much every song, which, hey, I mean. Dude, you're critical you know <laughs> anyway i'm really sad that that album ended i really had no expectations going into this i had very like little knowledge of who janelle was i felt like she spanned a few different genres which is totally cool i love when a artist can show like depth and range to their sound anytime someone crosses mediums of art and still does well that usually tells me that what they have in the tank is like pretty powerful especially when it comes to their like original medium when musical artists choose acting it's almost like they've already just destroyed music like they've already just completed it ran a few laps around the track already and needed another challenge and so i feel like that really makes a lot of sense with janelle i don't know i'm like very compelled to go back into her catalog and listen to more of her music i don't know what any of our other music sounds like i can't imagine that it's exactly like this because she seems like the type of artist that would want to change and evolve but i could be wrong i'm really excited to listen to this album like all the way through obviously i gotta like you know stop every now and then for you guys but to be able to listen to this straight through is going to be such a cool experience i'm going to listen to it with headphones i'm going to listen to it in the car i really want to hear every little piece that she threw onto every song with these songs she was putting instruments in the instrumentals which i know sounds so redundant obvious and like not that 
novel, but I really felt like instruments were at play in these songs. You could hear the horns. You could hear the percussion, man. The, whoever was drumming literally destroyed this. They killed it. The beats were awesome. The little like keyboards going on. The lasers. It's like they opened a room full of instruments for her and they ask her, which ones would you like to use from the album? And she just goes, yes. <laughs> I don't know if Janelle Monae is like underrated. Not that I have like this massive knowledge of music, but I feel like if I haven't like listened to an artist, it's possible that they're not mainstream. Then again, I try not to listen to super mainstream artists. I know you're probably saying like, well, he listens to Bruno in the weekend. With a few exceptions, I guess. But yeah, I hope more people listen to this. And I hope this kind of offers like a shift like in music. To me, this, this raises the bar a bit. This album has only been out for a few weeks. So I don't know what kind of attention it's it's gained. Um, hopefully, you know, more and more people listen to it and, and can appreciate its greatness because I think it deserves to be heard for sure. The last thing that I want to say, this felt like a soundtrack. I don't have the movie fleshed out of my head. I don't know what exactly it was that I was seeing while listening to this music, but I could just feel myself experiencing something more than just music as I was listening. To me, that just speaks to the magnitude of her creativity. This was a great suggestion. Shout out to that special commenter who recommended this album. I'm going to try and get more of your suggestions. That's the fun part is being able to gain an appreciation for the things that you guys love. So keep letting me know what you'd like me to listen to. But yeah, as always, guys, this has been Toby BQ. Stay real, stay hot and phenomenal and stay you.